Let us see what's new. Uh, Thursday, after the strange encounter at the little girl's room, Rebecca tried to remain composed throughout her day. As her classes ended, she received a phone call from Marianne McCulloch, who asked her unusual things about the Ermengarde mansion. Luke and Kylie invited Rebecca out for a date as she was about to leave, despite receiving a text message from Ashton. Rebecca agreed, and the three spent the evening at a nearby coffee house. Upon returning to her flat, she found a note that Ashton left her. That is such... That absolutely glosses over, like, just how devastating that that dinner was for her. Hilarious. Hopefully she figured stuff out after having someone actually put it in perspective for her. I hope. Doubtful. She still won't talk about what she's seen and experiencing. And then there's the apparition. <clears throat> the night wears on without further incident, despite the great number of thoughts swimming inside my head. Come morning, there's only a hush, a strange sort of stillness unlike the ones greeting me every morn. This one's uneasy, tight with anticipation, like a string stretched thin, merely waiting for the proper time to snap. Granted, it doesn't make my day any less pleasant, but the edge is there. Trying to put on chapstick while reading. A little, little easier than I thought it would be. And as expected, the second I step out of my flat, it comes apart, broken by the voices of two squabbling adults echoing from a floor below. Typically, it's Ashton and Isabella. The quiet was nice while it lasted. Quite a shame. What the hell were you thinking? Oh, I was correct. I wasn't. Oh, she wasn't thinking when she broke into the mansion. Ow! Could you let go? Not a few seconds later, they both ascend the stairs with Ashton pulling Isabella by her hair. I mean wrist. There's just so much of it. She struggles, as she should, but his hold on her remains firm, and he's going to punch the shit out of her with that fist. Freeing herself means having to draw blood as she attempts to pry his hand off her with uh, off her other one, or using unnecessary force to push herself away and fall down the stairs and die. Neither of which is better than the other. Or is it? <laughs> it will eliminate the competition, huh, Becca? One could potentially end in an accident, yay, while the other means having to hurt him physically, nay. She has the good sense to realize that, at least, however, it doesn't take the desperate edge in her voice when she answers, uh, answers Ashton's temper with her own. So on they go, none the wiser to my presence. Do you have any idea how much trouble you could get in? That's why I'm asking you for help. Is this what you've been doing these past three days? Because this doesn't make your case convincing, Isabella. Rose died, Ash. I know. Every single person in Luxburg knows. It's on the damn news. But that doesn't mean... People are missing. Some of those are my friends. And BRC's just covering it all up. They're in on the sex dungeon, too, this Sir John. He's, he's, he's like a grandmaster of the sex dungeon. You can't just barge into my office and expect me to do anything about it, right off the bat. This isn't a children's game, Isabella. We have procedures. We have to follow protocol. There's red tape all over this case for a reason. Isabella is the rogue, loose cannon cop in this situation who's not actually a cop. We sure as hell don't investigate things just because some stupid letter spooked us. Ash, you have to believe me this time. If we don't do anything right now, more people will... It's been a whole week. This stupid letter prank is getting old real fast. I'm sick of it. It was funny the first time, not so much now. You're the only one that can help me with this, Ash. Even Rebecca won't. All right, you two are awfully loud. What's going on here? Both of their heads snap up, almost in unis unison. Ugh. A displeased frown is on each of their faces, but this is a necessary interruption, since they mentioned her. What can they do? People still in their units have already taken interest on the commotion, 
with some taking a peek behind their curtains, while others are bold enough to creak open their doors, if only slightly, to tut at them. Because, <laughs> I don't know, not that I've ever encountered any English people myself, but I've read that tutting is something they do. <laughs> Uh, if they don't keep it down pretty soon, our landlady will show up. Getting a reprimand from her is the last thing I want to happen, first thing on a Friday morning, even if this is hardly my fault. Well, if you want to continue this, you two better do it elsewhere. You're disturbing other people. Don't worry, we're done here. No, we aren't. Becca, I looked it up. I called them. I visited some of them, and... Which you shouldn't have done in the first place. Isabella, you're going to create more problems for us with what you're doing. A team has already been assigned to it. Leave it to us. Your precious team is looking at it the wrong way. Becca, it's not just Rose. There are others. The last bit, the last bit strikes a chord, prod strongly at a memory. At that vicious smile already etched deeply inside my mind. The image appears clear enough that, at the mere mention of it, I stumble on my own question. W what do you mean? The letter, Rebecca! It's not... It's nothing. If there's really something going on because of that dumb letter, none of us would be standing here. We've all read it, haven't we? But Rebecca's alive, Zach's alive, I'm alive. So for the last time, this isn't a curse. There's a murderer on the loose, and your co-workers happen to be the victims. Give it a rest, Isabella. It's too early for this shit. Come on, Rebecca. Now's the time. Now's the time to redeem yourself and speak up. Damn it, Becky. Don't you think that's too much for a coincidence? Not so much. Most serial killers follow a pattern. I'll tell you about it some other time. And anyway, coincidence or not, the point is, civilians like you aren't supposed to get involved. You're putting yourself in danger. I wasn't chasing after. Will the both of you slow down and stop arguing for a minute? What's this about your co-workers, Belle? Becca, please don't tell me now you believe this shit. Sure, in a heartbeat, I'll agree with Ashton. That's how it has always been, besides having a very good point. Really, they're the very same ones he'll make every time I ask too many questions. But the fact of the matter is, what he wants to hear from me right now is far from what I've been seeing, sensing these past few days. Finally! It doesn't matter what Isabella or I believe on our own. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I double-clicked by accident. Oh, no, I'm good. Something odd has been happening around me, and that letter she picked up is at the heart of this. But, however, I respond to the question in their faces, only one of them will be pleased with it. I... I might have seen her. Ashton in particular won't be too happy to hear it. Damn him. Yay! Isabella likes us. And we gotta be straightforward. Screw you, Ashton. Wait till the last chapter, your chapter. Whichever's the last chapter. Imagine, or whichever is your chapter. Imagining the look his face, uh, the, the look his face doesn't take too much effort. His entire posture shifts the moment my reluctance shows. Shoulders tensing, brows furrowing, eyes gaining a sharp edge. Slap the shit out of him. He's already bracing himself from the disappointment. Hey. And it will be a disappointment. Not in a million years did I ever believe I'll be saying this either. I... I might have seen her. The woman Belle's been telling us about. The one she said she saw in the attic. Both of them stare at me like I've grown an extra head, and for a few moments Ashton looks as if he's about to have a fit. A pause treads at its heels after a silence thick enough one can almost hear a pin drop. You're kidding, right? Do I look like I'm joking? Really, Becca? Not funny. Ash, I'm not lying. Why would I lie about this? It's been this way since... since the film fest. The past few days have been really odd since we read that letter. Or maybe you're all just feeling under the weather. I'm not sick. Don't you think I'd know that by now? Becca, you're starting to sound like Scaredy Cat. Give me a break. Why don't you? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, you two. Isabella's voice cuts sharply through the conversation, abruptly putting an end to the brewing argument. It's all my fault. 
This is all my fault. I... I was only hoping I could fix this before... before any of you... before I... I'm sorry for dragging you all into this. She breathes in, deep, steadying, and in that moment, something falls behind her eyes as she looks away. I'll fix this. I promise. That something that falls behind her eyes was her contacts. A quiet resolve. The same one I saw in her that night from three days ago. But this time, it burns brighter. Even Ashton wavers at its sight when she looks him straight in the eyes, gaze unflinching. Gradually, his grip on her wrist loosens. Belle, there's nothing to fix. The problem is... The problem is you're all crazy. Just this once, Ash. Her voice, though small and lacking any force, stops him. Along with it, every sound, every noise dies around us. A hush descending as if the world is waiting for her words. And I'm very curious exactly how she's going to fix anything. You don't have to come with me. But if I don't do anything, I am going to regret it. Maybe she can save Marianne. She lays a hand atop his. Gentle. Pleading. Almost intimate, if one does not consider the circumstances we found ourselves in. Please. Ashton will never tell a soul, will never admit it even to himself, but it is in that short second that his own resolve breaks. The moment the hard edge in his eyes softens, and he relinquishes the, his hold on her, letting his hand fall limply to his side. Word, wordlessly, Isabella steps back and runs off. Oh my god. No, don't let her run off, leaving only a muttered thanks and a small, lackluster smile. Only after the last of her footsteps fade away does Ashton move, breaking the silence with one of his sharp exhales before reaching up to pinch the bridge of his nose in a gesture of frustration and surrender. Did you really have to tell her that? What do you want to hear from me then? That everything's fine? No, I want all of you to stop putting these ideas in her head. None of it is helping. <sighs> Never mind. Don't worry about her. I'll bring her back here. He's already poised to leave when my own instincts take over. I reach for him, gripping his elbow with the same unyielding grip, the action prompted by voices whispering at the back of my mind. He's already made it clear he's not going to believe me, but he deserves a word of caution. Who knows where all of this will take us, how all of this will end. He shouldn't be caught off guard, beliefs notwithstanding. Ash, I... I know you don't believe in those things she's saying. And you know me. I'm less inclined to believe in those things as you do. You don't have to believe the world is round-ish. Spherical, I should say. Or to be spherical. But I've seen something. There's something strange going on here. You don't have to buy it. If you don't want to listen to me, fine. But please... Try to hear her out. It's bad enough that Isabella goes off like this without telling anyone. I'm just worried something might happen to her if she keeps at it. Talk to her, okay? As if she trusts me enough for that. Doesn't the fact that she approached you first about this, instead of me, already say a lot? Different kind of trust, granted ex implicitly and never spoken, sometimes too big, too fragile to last. He falls silent for a long moment as he turns it over in his mind. In the end, he nods his whole body. All he manages to offer is a small body nod before he departs. And I promise to, at the least, listen to her before calling her batshit crazy, without the teasing or the jibes, first. A favor for me, and the least he could do for her. This is as much as I can do for him as well, until I've understood what's happening myself. Tonight... Hopefully, where this all started will provide the answers that I'm looking for. Why? Why go your separate ways? That's how people die in horror games and movies and stories. Got a cat trying to pull my sock off. Kittens, I swear. They're, they're so adorable when they're sleeping, but when they're awake, they're little nightmares. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, Ermengarde Mansion. Except the whole thing's off to a bad start, and all of a sudden, whatever Isabella claims dwelling in this mansion becomes the least of my concerns because I have nothing to wear that matches my hair. 
Of all the cabbies in Luxborn, I chance upon the superstitious one that made me walk the last mile to the mansion. Still not as bad as finding out your car's starter refuses to crank on when it was still working this morning, yes? Oh gods, I've been in that situation. I got stranded in, like, this huge city. Well, not huge. Relative to where I live, it was quite large. And, uh, yeah, that was unpleasant. A foreign, foreign city. You know, one, twelve miles away. It's quite, quite terrifying. It was like real-life horror, and I didn't like it. But it's equally as frustrating when you're forced to walk the rest of the way. All because the driver got spooked and did not get a tip, I hope. Isabel and him will get along so well, except for Isabel is trying to break into this place, I think. I do get his reasons. After all, I've had my fair taste of the bazaar lately. All of which might have been brought upon by that letter Isabella found here. Or maybe it was just a case of the cold. But you'd think he'd at least be charitable enough to take me a little closer to the house itself, not at a distance 15 minutes away from it by foot, given what I was wearing. Good thing I'm not wearing any- oh. <laughs> Gods, Rebecca. Opportunity wasted. Otherwise, that short walk would have been likely put me in a bad mood long before I have to suffer in a room full of strangers tonight. Although, this soon proves to be a problem the second the driveway comes into view and I hear the entrance, what is going on? Severely underdressed is a total understatement to describe how I look. Grumpy. Cars worth more than my own apartment and childhood home combined line the mansion's front yard. Men and women decked out in their best also flock near the entrance. Now is the perfect time to uh, start quoting Karl Marx, right? Most are eager, eager for the festivities to start, while some are simply idling about, enjoying the warm afternoon sun before it sets. But once the woman standing at the front porch speaks, their undivided attention immediately shifts to her and her... Er... Yes. Presumably, Miss Wright, from the confident manner she holds herself among present company. Wait. I'm confused. She thought that woman in the car was his wife, but yet she went to the mansion to pick up Isabella and encountered Marianne and Luke there, who was accompanied by the Hannah, 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 excuse me. So how could she mistake the, the car woman for this, this bubbly sunshine this despite keeping her uh, keeping a far simpler appearance than the rest of her own guests or not having her husband beside her now that is a true sign of class right there simple yet elegant a trait worthy of utmost admiration at best at worst she's the envy of every woman the subject of every gossip in Luxborn, not having her husband beside her and wearing what is probably a cursed necklace Welcome! Welcome, everyone! And Mom said we could have been good friends. I can't even picture myself mingling with the kind of guests she has. Though I admit she does seem familiar now that I've seen her this close. Memories of sitting in a vanity, not mine, being dressed in clothes too fancy for my tastes. Oh god, I was her living doll, wasn't I? Or that's what Rebecca would be thinking. They flit briefly in my mind until her cheerful tone rises above the buzz of her enraptured audiences again. Please, make yourselves at home! I wish I could share her enthusiasm, really. But being surrounded by all this extravagance, for the lack of a better term, merely makes me dread how the rest of the night might go. I shouldn't have let Luke's words affect me like that. I should have just gone ahead and asked, asked Ashton like I've planned. If he were here, then I won't have to. Be careful with Shirley, all right? Oh, look at that, he's here. The rest of that thought dies in my head at, or dies in my mind at once. A moment of astonishment overcomes me before confusion sets in seconds later. It takes another for my body to catch up. 
Once it does, when I finally turn to see it for myself, it's his familiar mop of hair that catches my eyes first. And oh, look, he's wearing the same thing he, was, he always wears. And there he is, almost an arm's reach if it wasn't for the guest standing between us. Ashton Frey, as if we don't need an introduction, standing in the Ermengarde Mansion's driveway with an air too lackadaisical for someone who absolutely abhors parties of any form. Or has any business here, as far as I know. The picture it forms is too bizarre for me that my mouth speaks out ahead of any coherent thought. Ashton? He swivels on his heel with an equally puzzled face. An odd expression flashes momentarily across it once he sees me, though he blinks it away before I can figure it out what it is exactly. Becca, what are you doing here? I was invited. Really? I had no idea you were friends with the host. Well, it's my parents, actually, but that's beside the point. What are you doing here? You hate parties. I still do. I'm just here on behalf of a friend. A friend named Isabella. That in itself is weird coming from him. It doesn't help that he isn't even making an effort to spare a glance my way when he answers, Oh my god. He doesn't even acknowledge your existence. Instead, they're focused at, a, at some point in the crowd. His gaze darting between people walking past us until a small frown forms in his face. That's uh, rare. Do you have someone with you then? Oh, he's on a date with Isabella. Nope, just me. I won't be staying long. Oh, well, if that's the case, maybe you and I can... Chief? Ashton, what's... <laughs> oh, and unexpectedly, he places his hand on my shoulder, stopping me mid-sentence. He still has the distracted look on, a, on him, except this time his eyes are sharper as if he has found what or who he's been searching for among the throng of partygoers earlier. Sorry, Becca, I... I need to... Did you, like always. There's something I need to check for a bit. I'll talk to you later. Do you have a ride home? No, I had to take a cab here. My car wouldn't stop this afternoon. But, but what about... I told you to get that old thing checked before, didn't I? You can head back with me after this. Anyway, I gotta go. See ya. Be careful, okay? I meet the smile he hastily throws my way with a frown of my own. What does he mean by that? But before I can ask already, he has turned his back from me and is walking away without a single explanation whatsoever. In some desperate effort, I try to catch up to him, if only to know what warranted this sudden departure and his odd warning at the end. Hey, be careful! About what exactly? Only for my attempts to be interrupted by muffled ringing in my pocket. Ow, cat. Mum's cheerful voice greets me as I, as soon as I answer. Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mum. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. The conversation itself doesn't last long. Just a simple hello, a reminder to, to enjoy the party and to send their regards to their old student that they prefer over their own daughter. But when the call ends and I get to look up, Ashton's already nowhere in sight. With a sigh and admittingly a little disappointment, I tuck my mobile back into my pocket and head inside. Even with familiar company, however coincidental this meeting is, this is somehow shaping up to be a terrible evening. The party hits full swing an hour later after everyone has chugged champagne. With the host's opening remarks given, still no sign of her husband, the poor woman, and the guests promptly fed, the band shifts the melody to a livelier tune. If this is what you call livelier, my god, it must have been downright dead earlier. Soon, laughter and the rhythmic tapping of shoes fill the room, all in accordance to the lifting strains of music. It seems fun, I admit, if I wasn't dressed like a schoolteacher. Fascinating at certain moments, the flurry of dancers making the music their own, almost with no care in the world. If it weren't so indisposed, I have, I'd have i have joined the crowd for a song or two. There isn't a lack of invitations anyway, plenty of them in fact, with some asking more than once, despite how she's dressed. 
It's only my stubborn refusal that prevents me from joining them, and perhaps hoping that Luke is the one that asks her to dance next. And I can! <laughs> A single nod is all it'll take in the evening. It would have been far more enjoyable for me. Uh, but pride in my own silly hopes, the thought of being seen with one of them by him curbs that. As much as I hate to admit it, you know what would really make him jealous if you were with Luke. Isn't that right, Becky? Becca? Because doing so also means outright acknowledging the douche's claims. That he has to be the one to tell me that still sends my blood boiling. I would have preferred someone more agreeable, less of an arse. Sometimes you need an arse to just point shit out to you. Except uh, the unfortunate part of them being an ass. It's a hard truth to swallow, especially when the very person at the center of it makes denial difficult. Can't even spare me a minute of his attention or a single glance at me the whole evening. Hell, Zachary might have spoken more words to me and he's here taking pictures. The big guy's busy covering the vent to boot. But at least he manages, manages to slip in a conversation or two between takes or a small wave of his hand before when he passes by. What's Ashton's excuse except something about Chief? He's been flitting in and out of sight the whole time. One moment he's hanging around a small group and another he's hovering around the string band. Just a second ago, he's wolfing down some deviled eggs by the buffet table, a glass of wine in hand. My god, the stakeout is so horrid, right? The next thing I know, he's gone! If I didn't know any better, I'd say he doesn't want to be with any of his friends. Is it because his boss is here? What's the big deal about that? It has never bothered him before. I swear, the next person who asks, I'm dancing the night away with. Ashton can go fuck himself! And it's Luke. Come on, tell me it's Luke or Kylie. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Oh, awesome. I hope she dances with Hana. Her voice almost makes me jump, too focused on the gobshite, wandering around the ballroom and my own annoyance to notice. If she's heard any of the profanities I've mumbled or she's taken notice of my discomfiture, she makes no comment on it, merely greeting me with a smile when I turn my attention to her, because, Becca, you used to be her living dolly. Miss Hannah Wright gives off a whole different air when she's not speaking to an audience and is playing with her hair like that, like she doesn't know what that's doing to people. Homely, a bit too friendly for my like what? A bit too friendly for your liking, what? But I guess that comes from being raised in such an environment and having to deal with pompous, snooty people. Though I suppose nothing has really changed from years ago. I remember her carrying herself in the same manner during that one and only visit. Does she remember any of it? Does she remember making you her doll? I won't be surprised if she doesn't. But she will, because you were her favorite doll, Rebecca. It has taken me a while myself. She's probably met a lot of people, like little Becky, throughout the years. How unfortunate. <laughs> Might have already forgotten about me or my parents. People like her thrive on connections, after all. Network, network, network. Nevertheless, I return her smile, awkward and stiff as it may be. Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the parvenu, those who climb, that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black-haired beauty, isn't he? Ooh. Okay, people. If you pit red eyeshadow around your eyes, you either look sick or you look strung out. It doesn't look good. It absolutely doesn't look good. And when you wear fake eyelashes, it's very, very obvious. It takes me a while to realize who she's talking about. Until Ashton walks by again in closer proximity than any of the times he has done so far this evening. He is peacocking. <laughs> I don't know. I, I... 
is, that that must be what he's doing. He's peacocking, right? I don't know how peacocking works, but I have heard that expression used in regards to human males. So, still without a look of acknowledging our way, though, even if Miss Wright speaks loud enough to catch the attention of anyone within earshot. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down those offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash, that's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend, then? Because that would explain those rejections. Oh, my. Yes, because he's clearly acting like a boyfriend at this time. Well, isn't this a... a sight? This isn't the first time someone has made that assumption. Almost every student I've had in the past did. My co-workers more often than not assume he is. A few of my neighbors also think we're an item. Not that Ashton has ever reacted to those. He's been quite indifferent about it, in fact. Because he likes to keep you on the back burner, Rebecca. I mean, who wouldn't want to have a lovely, busty, pink-haired woman on the back burner, right? Still, the heat of a blush creeps up my cheeks, a denial ready, despite wanting it to happen so badly myself. What? N no, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Tut, tut. Gods, I'm going to start tutting at people. That's hilarious. Many here would be happy to hear it. Although I need to hear an English person tut so I can mimic it. And I haven't been looking at him. And then butcher it in that classical American way. I do my best to summon a straight face, but before her got a good cheer, it easily falters. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Wow. See, look at, look at the little model in the corner. She just looks like she's either has a fever, is sickly, or strung out with all that red around her eyes. Although, I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. Or both. <laughs> kiss him while strangling him. Oh. You know, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. It's more the latter, currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. <laughs> At least not, not outside the sex dungeon. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. Uh, cause she has before. It's infectious, in a way. No sooner I find myself enjoying our chat more than I've imagined myself to. Although her attention briefly wavers at one point, she remains a good companion. <laughs> Even more than once I've mentioned who my parents are, her face quickly lights up and fondness graces her face, despite the meeting from several years ago being a short one. But of course, there are some things we really can't avoid talking about. After all, it's one of the few things I remember her asking me the moment she spotted little Becky in the room. Do you have a boyfriend? In retrospect, it's an odd thing to talk about as children when there are loads we could have started with. Is that what she asked back then? Yes, oh, I remember you. You were the cutest little thing with glasses. And when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lad called something with an A. Oh, gods, how embarrassing. I believe I still have the clothes she gave me, chosen all so I could impress him. And even back then, Ashton has always been denser than a rock, and that one attempt to get him to notice backfired spectacularly. Sure, he's keen. He's a detective for heaven's sake, but feelings, more than not, escapes him. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, Alexander, Andrew? Which makes this whole talk all the more embarrassing. And the more names she lists off, the more my discomfort grows until my smile turns into a grimace. What will she think of me? Here she is, married to a man she most probably loves, at that. While I'm still stuck in the same place, yearning for the same person. Ashton! Ash! 
that man is that boy! The same one. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, honey. No. No. Oh, goodness me. After all these years. I can see why, though. He's quite dashing. Y you don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down. I'm so sorry, but it really is cute. She says that. But for a short moment, a hint of pity flickers in her eyes. I take that as a chance to change the subject before anything more can be said over that matter. I haven't even figured out how I should feel about the things Luke told me. Now I'm getting dragged into a similar discussion. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. Though, to be frank, I doubt she'll be so willing to pass this up. The topic has already captured her attention. Please, Hana is fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Oh, and she calls you Becky. Awesome. Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. In the sex dungeon. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? That's not what I'm looking for. Oh, you don't want a happy ending, Rebecca? Have you ever had a happy ending, Rebecca? It's... well... Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? Bravo, Hana. Hana is... is familiar with happy endings. The idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. <laughs> no, they're real. They exist. But you have to keep going back for more happy endings. Ah, uh, no, not those kind. Not at massage parlors, I'm sorry. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. No, a happy ending is a, is a one... It isn't the final thing. You have to continuously have happy endings. Something to strive for, right? I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? Or set them free. I don't understand that one. Set yourself free. Don't set them free. Set yourself free. You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Like everything, you have to work at it. Hypocrisy. That's what this is. How dare I preach about something when it's exactly what I've been doing. And then... And then, I go and act as if I'm entitled to any of it. That, by the virtue of us growing up together, he must return whatever I feel for him. That he's not allowed to look at another because I'm the one who has stayed by his side the longest. When in the first place, Ashton has always been his own person. This is something I cannot force on him. I can only hold on to these, take care of it, until the time comes I confess it to him. Great, if he reciprocates, well, if he can't... You might have to actually, you know, go out and show interest in someone else if you have interest in them. If he won't? Selfish. I've been too selfish with yourself. How laughable that Luke's words still strike true up until now. <laughs> but what do I know? I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. Smart. Yes, she is smart, but does she have the common sense, the experience, the wisdom? Eh, apparently not. At one point, maybe I would have easily agreed to that. However, the past weeks have also seen changes in the way I view things. As nice as these things sound, it turns out whatever I previously know may not even be true for other people, or for myself. It is sobering and almost funny how things I might have said with so much certainty before it now have as doubts muddying, muddying each other. Gods, I can talk tonight. I absolutely can talk. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The music stopped. Everyone knows what's happening. It's been rehearsed after all. What is going up what, 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 oh my god, these people are faceless. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's the faceless epidemic. <sighs> oh. They live in a world without faces. They don't even have facial hair. 
<laughs> that would be awesome. Shaving sucks. But there will be time to mull about these later, because when a hush suddenly descends in the room, a whole different issue rears. Especially when Luke, effing Luke, strides into the now quiet ballroom, fashionably late, noozing with the same pompous mien he always carries around with him, as well as a glass of alcohol. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. It's the right mansion. Before long, Hannah leaves my side to join him, and he doesn't take a genius to piece it all together. Welcome, one and all, to our humble abode. They look like siblings, dear gods. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> gods, that's some kind of crap I would say myself if I was in a similar position. So, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone! His attitude, the manner he carries himself around the people, uh, his unfamiliarity with that part of the city, of effing course. I should have known. Although I'm partly at fault here, tabloids and the gossip columns have never been really my thing. I should have also expected that wherever Luke effing right is, some sort of drama will sure follow. He seems the kind of person who revels in it, figures it'll find him on its own even when he's not asking for it. Oh, what is this? Look at him! He looks horrible there. Look at her eyes! Holy crap, that is hilarious. It happens amidst a round of applause and hoots. That people lagging behind the crowd they've gathered does not catch on until the cheers turn into several scandalized gasps. I am pregnant with your little bastard! You promised me you'll take responsibility. Personally, I don't think I would do it in a public setting like that. God damn it, Luke! I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me! What do you mean you're pregnant with? Luke, is this true? Lies and slander, woman! Bravo to his voice actor. I mean, bravo. It's got range. Security! Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! No, no, you do not do this to me! I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband. I told you to leave that damn wife of yours. I kind of vaguely remember this. Then again, it's taken me six months to get to this point. Look at her. Does she look like she wants a baby? <laughs> Especially with those eyes. Look at the eyes. <laughs> but look at his face, gods. What's up with her hair? Does she look like she could take care of a baby? Oh, she probably could. Like, like you're special being pregnant. Every, any, any, just about any woman can get pregnant. And, you know, if we genetically alter some males, they could hold a fetus. <laughs> Seahorses. The commotion doesn't go further, despite the drunk woman appearing like she has plenty more venom to spill. And now... The child is going to have an unfortunate birth defect. In a little while, security shows up, escorting her out. Apparently, she's the chief inspector's wife, too. As if this whole thing can't get any more effed up than it already is. What a mess. But the damage has been done, and beyond the repercussions this will bring, I'm more worried about Hana. Maybe, Luke too, in part. I've seen the man that hides behind his self-importance, and it is someone who cares for the person who stands beside him. But apparently doesn't care enough not to knock up that woman. No matter how questionable that is now. After all, no anger is worse than that of a scorned woman. And Hana. Well, as refined and well-mannered as she is in front of their guests, I'm not sure if she'll be... All too willing to tolerate this. 
her party, her home, her husband, and that woman has just dared to walk all over it. It's in her eyes, like she knows. That saucy minx. When she turns to herself, the face of someone who demands should be given the same respect she has long deserved. You are no longer welcome in any of our states, our properties, and our businesses. And we will no longer patronize yours. Now, escort the girl and make sure she isn't standing even an inch within our grounds. Hana's outrage is a strange sight to witness. After those smiles and the grace she has carried herself through the entirety of the party. This, like this, her eyes burning bright with fury, I don't doubt she can do so much more, ruin the scandalous woman if need be. Shaming her is already an act of mercy, generous enough, coming from her. You won't show your face to me ever again if you know what is good for you, Rochelle. Take her away. You know what? This entire game has had great voice actors. Bravo. No one protests. Not even the subject of her ire as she is forcibly dragged out. Even the smile on Luke's face wavers when she eventually turns to him and pulls him out of the room for a talk of their own. For a brief moment, there is a concerted effort between those left in the hall, a short second of tense silence while struggle to figure out what to do with themselves. But true to the kind of talk these situations attract, it doesn't last too long. Soon, chatter explodes throughout the whole ballroom. Worried murmurs, clicking of tongues, and tuts and inappropriate gossip filters through the thick tension in the air. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, during this, like, the murmurs, you, you just hear this random tut, 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 tut. <laughs> okay. Uh, most of them haven't even left the premises, and they're already talking and tutting about it. <laughs> uh, tomorrow it'll be on the news for sure, in every local broad broadsheet and tabloid in Luxborn. I couldn't care less about any of it, simply thinking about this, or okay, kitten, just walk in front of the monitor, if you will. Simply thinking about this is already gives me a headache. When the shock has faded, I feel... I just feel bone-tired. I've accomplished nothing of what I've come here for, and apparently Ashton has disappeared sometime during the commotion. To speak to the chief inspector. Possibly. I'm not sure what pisses me off more. That he ignored me the whole evening and might have just left without saying anything, or knowing he obviously had some other motive for being here. Can't he at least trust his own friends for that? For having their own motives? He didn't have to hide it from me. The only relief to be had in this, perhaps, is Zachary's comforting smile when he approaches. He appears as disturbed when he stands beside me, fiddling with the buttons on his camera, even though the device is off. The eventful night, huh? <laughs> you can say that again. It was awful. He pauses for a moment, stares at me intently. <laughs> then he laughs, a tired one but filled with humor in spite of what we've witnessed. <laughs> Let me guess. Ashton. What makes you think he's my problem? Just a hunch. Everyone can see it, Rebecca. My God, excuse me. That time of night. And, uh, it's all in your face, actually. All over your face. <sighs> Why does he have to? I don't understand that man anymore. Like I always say, you should just... Oh, you can bet your ass we're going to have a very long talk. I'm not letting him off easy this time. I'm sure he has a good reason. He won't say it, but he likes being around us. Heck, we're probably the only people he likes. He ain't gonna ruin that for something stupid. He can be dense, but he ain't dumb. Oh, he's... He's most certainly dense, apparently. Or he knows exactly what's going on and he just likes it. That's exactly what I've been telling people, isn't it? We'll see about that. I just wanna go home. Are you done here? Nah, sorry. I can't until the party ends. It's alright. I'll just take a cab or something. I'll see you later, Zachary. 
Before removing myself from the room, I lay a comforting hand on his arm. He'll need it among these people. <laughs> among these sharks. And then I am gone, more than ready to end the disastrous night as early as possible. And then, bam, she's in the sex dungeon. Gods. As it turns out, the night isn't done with me yet. Because no sooner has the porter closed the door behind me, I find myself standing alone in the foyer with one Luke Wright. No sign of his right wife. Just him and the agitated clicks his shoes make while he treads around the empty room. Away from the media's prying eyes and their guests judging stares, it's easy to glean how much the scandal has him shaken. Not to the point where he has utterly lost his composure, he appears to have mastered himself enough not to. But an ample opening is there for a nervous edge to show on the lines of his shoulders. What do you know? The man is not as tough as he makes himself out to be. Sure, I've seen this before, briefly in that one second in the hallway at school. It's a strange matter, however, to witness this out in the open. Behind closed doors, this is the real Luke Wright. Though maybe that's because he hasn't noticed my present yet. presence yet, busy as he is with his thinking. If he's aware, I doubt he'll be acting like this. His pride is one thing he'll always wear with him. Even now, when I place a gentle hand on his shoulders and he whirls around to face me, there's a second long moment of anger flashing across his features before it dissolves into confusion. He tucks it away as quickly as he can, but it does nothing to change the impression I've built of the man in my head. Daisy, must you be everywhere? We've only met three times, Luke. Quit the dramatics. Besides, shouldn't you be aware of who gets invited to your party? If I was, there wouldn't be any of that scene tonight. That munter wouldn't even get an inch within this property. I'd better off Luxport if I could. He probably pawns everything off to their servants in Hana. Pompous, elite, elitist, douche. Did you just come out here to lecture me about it? Because, Daisy, I've had enough of it for one night. I don't need to hear another one. You are a very unpleasant man. <laughs> so I've been told. Will that be all? If so, I suggest you go back and join every bloody goss in that room. Not everything. As unpleasant and frustrating talking with this man is, he deserves the benefit of the doubt, at least. The questions and criticisms aren't lacking, of course. But right this instant, there's only one that comes to mind. You know, out of all these, like, nothing makes sense. You should be with your wife, I guess. You know, brooding over here isn't going to fix this mess. Let's see. Oh, apparently he likes that. Wow, Isabel and him like her the most. Not even Ashton or Hannah. Marianne. Marianne really doesn't like her. Again with the lecture. Will you stop calling it that? Very well. What should we call this then? A heart to heart? Please don't. I might puke. And just so you know, I don't want to talk about feelings. Ever. This isn't one, all right? It's just a friendly concern. Bloody hell, can't you just take it for what it is? He pauses at that. Suddenly, he doesn't know what to do with his hands, and in the end, he simply stuffs them back into his pockets and sulks. There probably aren't many people who tell him that. He's a difficult man to get along with, after all. I honestly won't give him a second of my time if I didn't see a different side of to him. Dealing with him requires more than patience. When the awkwardness passes, mostly coming from him, he merely glances away. But the tightness in his shoulders has eased, and when he speaks again, despite his rather rude choice of words, none has any venom in it. Friendly concern, right. While we're at it, I should mention that Hana used to call that viper friend. <laughs> now I think she might want to strangle the munter if she sees her again. Okay, that is the second time I've heard munter. And I forgot to hide my phone away from the speakers. Let's look up Munter. Crap, I don't. <sighs> Munter, right? Blithering. 
Blithering, apparently. Uh, British slang, derogatory, an ugly person. Uh, all right. <laughs> the plural form of it is munters. Thank you, Wiktionary, for uh, clearing that up. After she's done with me, of course. I doubt she's going to do anything like that. What do you even know about this? Uh oh, I know enough. You may look like a sleazy douche, and you still are, by the way. It's almost comical how fast his face shifts from mild disdain to offended, but I don't let it distract me. These things need to be said, and he needs to hear them. Even though they're coming from some meddling stranger. But you have your few good moments. I might even say that you're a decent person, if I'm in the mood. Now go. If you really love her, you've got to try and fix this yourself. Maybe tomorrow. Luke! Daisy, did you see her earlier? Was that the face of a wife who wants to have a chat with her cheating husband? Oh, did you just admit? Did you just admit to it, Luke? Oh, well, at least you admitted you did something wrong. Good for you. How about a star? Would you like a star to go with that good deed? Don't get used to it. Do you realize how awkward this is? Oh, I do. Before I've even thought about what to say, I've known there can only be two ways this can go. All things considered, it isn't as bad as I've assumed. However, there are still some things my, bra my brand of encouragement can't fix. His marital problem... His mar... <laughs> his marital problems, first and foremost, his attitude follows right after. Concerns aside, I can't help with those. Those are things only he can fix, and it's definitely not my standing around here bantering. <laughs> Don't worry, I was just about to leave. Feel free to continue with your brooding once I'm gone. I'm not going to tell anyone. Cross my heart. You think this is funny, Daisy? <laughs> Laughter is the only response I can give him. With a slight wave of my hand, I end it right there and walk away. Too long, didn't read. Stop skulking. Or sulking. Skulking, sulking. Thank you, kitten, for walking across the monitor again. Although I can't resist the urge to glance back before I leave, if only to have one last look at the man, he really is. But the instant I turn my gaze on him, I see it! Oh. Oh, she has him. Oh, does she have him at all? Looming, hovering over his shoulders, drawn to him like a moth to a flame. Like the first time I've stepped inside this place in search of Isabella. He was there too, wasn't he? That man, along with his wife and another person, Miss McCullough. And that shadow. No, a woman now. Now she has been made a woman from a shadow. Her, no longer a dark blur. Terror rushes through every vein in my body. A crippling sensation gripping every part of me while she stares at me with a glare filled with nothing but hate and venom. It's like staring at the eyes of a woman I've unknowingly robbed of something precious. I try to say something, a warning, but before I can gather my wits and voice it out, someone shuts the door behind me. As if to keep outsiders away from the secrets this mansion possesses. Dot, dot, dot. The brush of fresh air against my cheeks does little to dampen the chill in my bones. By now, the sensation, the fear, and disquiet it leaves whenever I see her is feeling familiar enough for me. Already it has made a home in my nerves. I don't even notice my trembling hands until I cross my arms across my chest. The cold from the tips of my fingers seeps through the thick material of my shirt. Neither of it helps bring together some semblance of coherent thought in my head. But I know. I know I should. Someone has to tell that douche. I start walking back before the fear can cripple me again. 
It's not wise. Returning, that is, especially after what happened. But Hana's still an old friend, and Luke. Luke doesn't deserve whatever misfortune that letter might bring. I can't just leave those two in there. Isabel is right. She's real, and there's something she wants from everyone who has read that. Becca, where'd you go off to? If you're done here, let's go. I'll get you back to the city. My mistake. The second his voice cuts through the crisp night air is that I've allowed my annoyance to get the better of me. Fuming, purpose forgotten, I whirl around and march towards him. One accusation after another piles up at the tip of my tongue, ready to be hurled at any moment. There's no hesitation holding me back when I fling it at him. That straight face he keeps as I do so doesn't help temper my anger, however. It only makes me want to slap some more sense into him. Shouldn't I be the one asking you that? Becca, I've been waiting here the whole time. I told you I hate parties like... Oh, oh. Doesn't match up with the subtitles. My goodness. <laughs> and before that, where have you been the entire evening? Is this where she confesses her feelings? Right then and there, I might have forgiven him if he's shown some ounce of remorse for leaving me like that. Maybe he could have looked away, given me a sign that my assumptions might be right. He doesn't even need to put them into words. A single gesture of confirmation is all I need. Rather, what I get is the same impassive look. He does that whenever he can't disclose anything. He does that whenever he's lying. In the face of it, it emits a thick tension. A frustrated huff is the only thing I can summon. Be that way. Fine. Suit yourself. No more words. All kisses. After everything I've seen and heard tonight, I'm already too t exhausted for those. So without speaking any further, I simply walk past him and stomp over to his car. She stomps over his car. Although before I can pull open the door, he calls out, one hand outstretched, a gentle weight on my shoulders. Wait, Becca. I got a kitten stuck to my... Oh my god. Okay. He pauses, his brows furrowing and lips curving into a slight frown. I can almost see the gears turning in his head while he tries to piece together everything he wants to say. Before, perhaps, I might have waited patiently for those. He's not a man fond of using words to express himself. More often than not, any gesture of honesty will only come out blunt and coarse when forced. But today, for one reason or another, I simply can't summon that forbearance. Ashen, if you're just going to waste my time again... And then he kisses her. Becca, listen. I don't know how else... That much is obvious. Why don't you just take the whole bloody night? Go on. I can wait until next year. <laughs> Better yet, why don't you just keep it all to yourself like you always do? It's not like... Rebecca, will you hear me out first? The silence I can offer him. But whether I'll believe what he's about to say is still up for a debate. A very long debate in the shower. I honestly don't know how else to put this. I'm aware your parents have some kind of history with Hana Wright, and somehow you're friends with her. But you should stay away from these people for now, especially the husband. Who? Luke? His expression deepens into a scowl at my mention of the name, but whatever opinion he has, he doesn't immediately voice. Still, something about it has greatly displeased him, evident in the stiff note his tone assumes. Yeah, he's... he's bad news. It's my turn to frown this time. What does he mean by that? Uh, care to explain your reasons? Care to explain your reasons? Well, he liked that. I've not meant for it to sound as harsh as it does, but anger and frustration have never been a good match in me, particularly in nights like this. It's not surprising when Ashton jerks back as if I've struck him. For a fleeting moment, something akin to hurt darts across his features, his eyes narrowing and hands closing in 
tightly into Hephaestus' sides. Then swiftly, swiftly he glances away and shifts his focus on the lion trees nearby, like an answer can be gleaned from the dark expanse. I'm, I'm really sorry, Becca. What is it for? For the party? The vague answers he continues to give? Does include all those times before this, the year's worth of it. I don't doubt its sincerity. However, at the moment, the forgiveness he's asking isn't something I'm all too willing to hand, furious as I am. It's frankly a wonder how I can keep myself from raising my voice at him. We'll talk about this tomorrow, and you better have a proper answer for me by then. There's a brief hesitation before I step away, a short moment of wanting to say more, of waiting if he has anything to add. He's only silent, eyes still trained at a distance. It is the last glimpse I see of him before I climb inside the car. If the door slams closed with the same force as the anger I'm holding, its sound merely vanishes into the night, unnoticed. He follows soon after, and shortly we're on our way back to the city. Yet, even the city's bright lights welcoming us, the dense, somber air from the mansion still lingers. All right. Next time, holy crap, maybe we'll actually finish her chapter. Oh boy. Very interesting what's going on, but... Mm, very long, long game.